everybody. Happy Easter. Oh, excuse me, did I say hoppy? <laughs> Apologize. Well, some of my favorites are here. I hadn't got to say hi to yet, but <laughs> a couple of them hop right up. It's me. Well, hey, I'm very excited. It's great to be here. Let's just, Lord, I just pray over the remainder of the service. We love you, Jesus. I pray that our hearts would be open to your word, uh, that we would be open to receive what you have in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm going to start this off with the, y'all need to pay attention to this one. This is a couple of Easter jokes. You ready? There is a, a school teacher, and she had the, some of the younger kids, and she wanted to ask and see if they knew what Easter was. So she asked her little group, one kid raises his hand, and he says, uh, yes, it's when we dress up in these costumes and we go door to door and we ask for candy and say, trick or treat. She says, no, sweetie, that's Halloween. So another kid raises his hand and he says, that's when we usually have turkey and we eat till we really get full and we talk about all the blessings in our life. She says, no, that's Thanksgiving. Then one more, another kid raises his hand and he says, yeah, that's when we wake up in the morning and we all exchange gifts. We open these presents and we just have a wonderful time. She says, no, that's Christmas. And then the, the fourth boy, he raises his hand and she's like, oh, that's the kid that always causes lots of trouble. He's never paying attention, but I'll call on him. So she calls on him and she, he says, well, that's when we celebrate De Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. And today we're celebrating him rising from the dead. And she goes, wow, that is correct. And then he adds, and if he sees a shadow, then we know that there's six more weeks of winter. <laughs> I like the guy in the, lap, the back that's laughing real hard, too. That's good. I even, prayed, I even prayed about that joke, like, well, do you really want me to tell that? What do you call a bunny with a large brain? An egghead. What does the Easter bunny, where does he get his eggs from? We'll call it, we'll say that's right, from eggplants. One more, you want one more? What happened to the Easter Bunny when he misbehaved at school? He got egg-spelled. <laughs> Did you hear about the ladies whose house was infested with Easter eggs? She had to call an eggs terminator. <laughs> I'll kill your eggs for you, lady. <laughs> what is the Easter egg? What does an Easter egg hate the most? What day does the Easter egg hate the most? Fry days. That'd be F-R-Y, by the way, fry. Some of y'all looking kind of over easy. No, I'm kidding. All right. All right, enough of those, huh? <laughs> All right, we'll put that over to the side in case y'all look like y'all are falling asleep or something. Well, today, hey, we're going to talk about the risen Christ that brings peace. He gives peace to us. He wants to give peace to us, right? And I want, I've, I've really connected that with his resurrection of how he wants to give us peace and I'll talk about that. You know, we all search for peace. We would all raise our hand on that probably. We all want peace in our heart. We want to be able to give other people peace. That's kind of a natural thing sometimes to go and try to help people to bring them peace. Really, the search has continued since the fall of Eden, since the Garden of Eden. People have searched for peace. There are people that find peace. I don't know about you. So many of us talked about this last Wednesday, but I want to find that peace. I want to walk in that peace continually. In Isaiah 57, 21, it says, the wicked cannot find peace. Do we want to be the wicked? We do not. So they will not find peace. And I want you to, uh, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 3, it says, in the last days, people will experience false peace. Have you ever had anybody, you talk to them, and they say they got peace, but you know something that's not quite right? They may be experiencing false peace. Like, I know I'm right with the Lord. I don't care what any of y'all says. I don't have to accept him, <laughs> but I'm right. There are things we have to do to have Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, to give us that peace. And most of us would say, I've had days where there's not peace. He wants you to have peace, even in tough circumstances, even in things that are tough in your life. I don't know about y'all, but sometimes there are things that are really, really hard to understand and accept. I've had those in my life. I believe many of y'all, probably all y'all have. He wants to be able to give us peace through that. He wants us to still be able to enjoy serving him. Jesus promises peace. Isn't that good news? Isaiah made a prophecy of Christ. It's called him the Prince of Peace. So if we have the Holy Spirit, we have the Prince of Peace with us all the time. So we can walk in peace. We can have hard days, bad days, but we can still walk and have ultimate peace over these type of things in our head, in this society 
nowadays, we can still have peace with all the things that we see are going on. Has there always been bad things going on since the beginning of time? I would have to say, yeah. There's always evil, and there's always that, that brightness that we're called to bring to other people. We want to bring them peace. I tell you what, I really want to walk in peace and be able to bring peace to others. I don't want to be able to be talking to them about things that I really don't have. I want to be more of an effective witness and have that peace with the Prince of Peace. Jesus promises peace. He says this in John 14, 27. My peace I give unto you. So he wants to give us peace. Christ is the source of peace. And here's my scripture today. is out of John 20. It's 19 through 26. That evening on the first day of the week, the disciples were meeting behind the locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he held out his hands for them to see, and he showed them his side. They were filled with joy when they saw their Lord. He spoke to them again and said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Then he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you refuse to forgive them, they are unforgiven. When you study that, he's talking about us having the, uh, the excitement of bringing that news to them because only the Holy Spirit can forgive sins. I just want to say that because he's talking about us going to them and sharing the good news. One of the disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, we have seen the Lord, but he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands, put my fingers into them, and place my hand into the wound of his side. Eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. He said, peace be with you. Lord, we bless your holy scriptures in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, the first point I'm going to make is we can have peace when we are afraid. Anybody ever been afraid? Sometimes fear comes, we get afraid, we get scared, whatever it may be. We've been afraid and we're like, man, how do we get rid of that? Well, here are some ways. And I'll ask you all this, I just read it. Where were the disciples assembled for fear of the Jews? These were the disciples that walked with Jesus that he taught and talked to for about three years. He told them what was to come, but they fully didn't understand it because they were behind locked doors scared and afraid they were worried because jesus didn't do the way that they thought he was going to do like a military takeover or whatever they thought in their mind he didn't do it that way jesus is not going to do it my way or your way either is he the good news is he's going to do it his way so they were hiding instead of rejoicing that should have been a day of hallelujahs even though it's it's sad right that he went through that but they're like man every book of the old testament prophesied what was coming about jesus christ there's no exception. They all talk about Jesus. Isn't that awesome? That he was going to die and rise from the dead um, on the third day. Christ has risen from the grave. He was alive. And I'll say it like this. He is alive. Christ is alive. If you have him in your heart, you are alive. And that's exciting news for a believer. Amen. Amen to that. Yep, we can do a little clapping in our church. That's good, isn't it? So he had rose. The tomb was empty. The promise of resurrection fulfilled. I want to tell you something. The, pro the promise of Jesus resurrecting your life where you're at will be fulfilled if you serve Christ. He wants to give you the desires of your heart. There are things sometimes that we wanted so bad that we haven't got, and there's not always an answer that we understand that. I've had the same. And sometimes you're like, man, I don't get it, Lord. Well, I do know this. He loves us. He wants things to be fulfilled in our lives. The angels had rolled the stone away, showing God's power. Isn't that awesome? God's power was so mir uh, miraculous, the angels rolled that away just to show that Jesus cannot be kept down. Of course, he could have just appeared, but people got, we get to participate in things sometimes and be a part of it. He wants us to participate. He wants us to be connected to him. He wants to roll your stone away from whatever's blocking you from your successful walk, I would say. He wants you to be successful in your walk. I want you to think for just a second, and you never want to do it in like a beating up yourself probably, but Think of the thing that you want to change most in your life. There may be one, there may be two. And think about that and say, Lord, I really do believe you're all powerful. Today can be that day. You don't have to come to church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. And that's somebody to hear or that's watching online and say, man, it's not going to happen. It will happen. It can happen and it will happen if we believe and we serve Jesus. We don't have to have a lot of faith for that, do we? 
How, how, fat, how big has it got to be? What, what kind of seed, mustard seed? Faith of a mustard seed, right? And God will show his power. Jesus appeared to the disciples when they were afraid. He wants to appear to you if you're afraid. He wants to appear to you anytime you're afraid. The old life that continues to come back, he wants to continually appear to you for you to be able to combat that situation. People are coming at you with your past, with this, with whatever, to try to get you to go back or to take you away from the kingdom. There is a light and darkness that are always, right, colliding. Well, guess what? Light wins out. So let's stay in the light. The doors being shut could not keep Jesus from those that he loved. You know, I think it's remarkable that they did that, and they made a point to say that the, the rooms and the doors were locked. And then, paya, there is the king. He pops right in the door. You know, how, can't you imagine they're standing there like, man, this is pretty sad. Oh, there he is. My bad. I was wrong. And he just appears out of nowhere, right? Because he's spirit. And we know that spirit is more than our physical, right? Because one day the physical will be gone, but the spirit will always last. And Jesus appeared to them. And what did he say to them? Peace be with you. He wants you to have the ultimate peace. That really touched me. I read that so many times and studied on it. But peace be with you. He wants us to walk in total peace all the time, right? And he wants me to not shift from the spirit to the carnal, right? He wants me to be thinking in the spiritual realm more of things like that instead of thinking of judging people or thinking this about you or this, for me to slip into my, my way of thinking, in other words, right? He wants me to be able to look more through his eyes at y'all, at the world. He wants y'all to do the same. He doesn't want me to look at your flaws and be negative and do this. He wants us to build one another up, right? He wants us to encourage and speak truth. He wants to let you know. He wants us to let each other know things that we need to change maybe. We can talk into each other's lives, speak into each other's lives. Amen? No door, this is Matthew Henry says this, no door can shut out Christ's presence. And we see that in the physical, but it's in the spiritual. Nothing can shut out his presence. No matter anything anybody does to you, says to you, however they talk, whatever it may be, nothing can shut out the presence of our Savior. When Jesus comes, he speaks to fearful hearts. They all had fearful hearts. They were scared in the room. And we've been scared. He wants to speak to our fearful hearts. He wants to encourage us to be able to walk with peace. He wants us to be able to walk in our calling. He wants you to be a different maker, maker, whatever bracket you're in, right? He's like, man, there are, there are people that Seth and Caden or whoever can reach that I can't reach. You know, they're cooler. They can go to the, talk to the youth or whatever. They get to invite them on youth. Event. He wants us to reach everybody, that not one soul would perish, right? Not one. So that means he wants me to get it right. He wants me to be walking in peace. Doesn't mean every day is peaceful, does it? Anybody had an unpeaceful day? <laughs> Raise your hand if you got some kids at home still. Ah! All right. Sometimes they can be unpeaceful, right? You can have a, you go, it can be perfect, it can be great, but sometimes you can have a rough day, right? <laughs> sometimes you can have many rough days. He wants to even bring peace to that. That's my prayer when I'm dealing with my two little blessings. Lord, help me to handle it the way you'd want me to, not the way that I just did. I pray that immediately after I mess up. And then I go to my girls and I say, I'm sorry. Daddy should not act like that. Anytime that I do something like that, and it gets easier, and it's okay. I said, well, thank you for saying it. It's not okay, but thank you. You know, but I know what they mean. But there are people that we all need to reach. We need to, uh, people in their hearts that need Jesus at whatever age bracket, right? Faith in the crucified and risen Christ takes our fears away. I don't think I can get rid of my fear. Lord, take my fear away. If it's not gone tomorrow, Lord, take my fear away. I believe your word. Let me see what's that scripture. All things are possible through Christ Jesus for those that believe. All things. What the heck does all mean? I studied in several languages. All means all. Everything. All the above. He wants to take away all fears. He wants peace in everything that you do. If people are not bringing peace to your life, then you have something to deal with, right? Hopefully that's not your spouse, right? Ah, if it's rough, God wants to bring peace to your household. He wants to change you, right? Doesn't he want to change you? He wants to change us all. We can have peace when we're apprehensive. Anybody ever been a little apprehensive? Well, I got a photographic memory. I have the definition right here and right here. That's anxious or fearful. Sound familiar? That something bad or unpleasant will happen. Anybody ever thought that? Now, that, now there's a difference if God gives you a check in your spirit because something bad's getting ready to happen. But this is talking about kind of a lifestyle of being anxious, fearful. It's perception of your understanding. 
That means our paradigm, our filter, it needs to change. We need to go, man, I need to rethink, Lord. I don't want to be apprehensive. I don't want to be fearful. I don't want to be anxious. I've been that before. I don't receive that, though. If I feel it coming up on me, and I'm, when I think of it, I'm like, Lord, I know that's not from you. I want to walk in peace. You said peace be with me, right? I want to walk in peace. Well, how do I have that peace all the time? I run towards him. If I wonder how to get it, I go towards him. If I don't have it the next day, what do I do? I'm smart enough. Hold on, let me think. I go towards him. And then if I don't got it, I go towards him. I keep going. I keep pursuing. You keep striking the ground, like it says in the Old Testament. You keep striking the ground. You keep beating on it, saying, Lord, I'm going to keep knocking on that door like that widow. I'm going to keep pestering you. I want it. There may be things he says, you need to change this to have that peace. And that's okay. That's a great loving father, isn't it? This could be you coming to him. You not being in that 90% of the category that A.W. Tozer says in the church that he believes is not going to heaven. That's a pretty big percentage. <laughs> and a good religious church would, if you hear that, like 90% are going to hell and 10%. And we're like, well, I wonder which other nine churches are all going to hell. <laughs> I'm sure that one, one out of, I'm sure our whole church is going to heaven, right? I'm sure that's not what it's saying. It's saying at large, a high percentage that say, you know me, right, Father? And what does scripture say to some? I never knew you. We don't want to be in that category. We want to walk in peace. We don't want to have false peace. We want to be walking with the Lord. That means I've accepted him in my heart. I've changed my ways. I've turned my life over to him. He showed them his hands and his side, the hands that had been nailed to the cross. He showed them his punctures of his hands. He showed the wound in his side that confirmed his death to the soldiers. So he showed them all that. You know, oh, Thomas got the AKA, the nickname, right, of uh, Doubting Thomas. Not a great nickname, probably. <laughs> Most of us wouldn't want that. But Thomas, after that, he, he, still, he still followed the Lord, though. He followed the Lord. The doubting disciples are now amazed that Christ is risen. Any doubt that we've had, I want you to know in your heart, be amazed that Christ is risen. Not only on the day here that we celebrate, but every day that we celebrate his resurrection. And what would this mean to them? What would it mean to you? What would it mean to me? What would the responsibilities be that it would brought to them? Jesus speaks peace to those he is about to assign the task of world evangelism. So he speaks peace to us. He wants us to get our walk. He does really want us to get on fire. There's no question there. That's what brings people to church, right? They're like, I think I see a flame coming out of Life Springs Church. Something's on fire there. Fire. Huh. That's Life Springs. That's us. He wants us to, people to come say, what is going on? And you don't have to, see, sometimes we invite, right? I invite people, but sometimes the Lord's just going to bring people in to go, man, what is it about that? That's the Lord. We want the Lord to lead this church, right? Not a man, not the false doctrine, but Jesus Christ. He wants you to have peace. He wants us to go out and evangelize. Jesus said, as my Father has sent me, even so, I send you. Could that be to the workplace? Could it be at school? Could it be in the store? Anybody ever had one of those opportunities? Like, I think the Lord really wants me to talk to that person. Then you either do it or you don't, right? He'll set up any opportunity. He'll set up opportunities for you to be able to talk to those, whether they're loved ones or relatives, uh, whoever it may be. We can be at peace about the power we need to witness for the risen Christ. My third point, my last point here is we can have peace when we feel alone. Anybody ever felt alone? Sometimes life feels a little scary. You feel a little alone, like, man, I'm the only one going through this. This is so tough. Nobody understands. You know, in many cases, that's true, but he understands. He's the one that's always with us. I'll tell you what, I'm, I, I know many of y'all and, and myself as well that have gone through some tough things in life. And you're like, man, but the risen Christ does not want us to ever feel alone. He wants you, if you're a couple, let me tell you this. Let me encourage you on something, too, that I feel like this is from the Lord. That if y'all have come in unity and agreement, whether there's kids involved in this, uh, stick to the script. You know what I mean? We still have grace in there and love in there and all that. Uh, but when you come to agreement to do things, we're going to do this for our kids, and then one starts doing it differently, you know what I'm saying? It makes it a little tough. Stick to what, what y'all have planned from the Lord. You know, say, you know what? We got to be firm. We got to love them. You know, we're all gonna, we all may do things a little differently. The Lord has a special plan for your kids. He wants y'all to be in unity, okay? Y'all think about that if you're a couple when you leave because uh, I feel in my heart that that's speaking to some people like, you need to, you need to stay on track and do what you said. And, uh, you know, I keep thinking, kids will manipulate you. Uh, so, all right. That's for somebody here. 
uh, we're back. So we can have peace when we feel alone. Thomas had missed the first meeting with Christ after the resurrection. Like I said earlier, he had doubted the words of the disciple and got the name Doubting Thomas. Now think about this. This can be good or it can be bad. I hope it's good. But think about this. And think, uh, if your family gave you a nickname, what would it be? Would it be Mr. Pouty, Mr. Moody, Mrs. Sassy Frassy, Mrs. Attitude, Mrs. Like Watch Her Hip when she gets all mad and goes, whatever it may be, right? She's got a bad attitude, whatever it might be. You know, or is it something, it could be bad or it could be good. <laughs> it could be Mr. Angry. Hey, hey, good morning, Dad. Hey, whatever, shut up, be quiet. Jesus loves you, go back to your room. <laughs> shut up, shut up. I'm studying right now, be quiet. Anybody ever got interrupted from something real important? You know, I try to sneak in and pray. I get interrupted sometime and, hey, I don't, I don't forget my priorities though. Uh, God has called us to disciple kids at home or this or whatever it may be. But think about that. I thought about that when I wrote it down. I thought, man, what would my nickname be? Okay. <laughs> Just because I'm up here, I'm not going to tell you what I think mine would be. <laughs> but we could all think of it. Hopefully, it could be something good. You may have a good and some bad things we got to work on. You know, hopefully, it's a good thing. But whatever you thought of, if it's bad, God wants to deliver you from that. He wants to change that. They changed names in the Old Testament, remember? Changed him from this to Israel. There was reason. There was significance. So there's a significance there. Now he meets with the believing ones. He's the only doubter among them. That's Tommy boy, Thomas. Thomas must have felt alone among all the believers. Poor Thomas. Closed doors could not keep Jesus from dispelling the doubts of Thomas. Any closed doors that you think you see in your life, Jesus wants to come and dispel any doubt, get rid of any doubt, all doubt, and bring you nothing but comfort. He wants to bring you peace. He wants you to walk in full peace. I'll tell you what, I will not quit thinking about that until I have peace in every area of my life, I believe. God wants to just go every area. If I wake up or I'm driving out of here and I feel the peace going away, I'm like, Lord, I don't want the peace to leave. If I go and get in a big argument or this happens or whatever with somebody, I want immediately to remember, Lord, you've called me to have peace. Called me to react a certain way too. Jesus brought proof and peace to the disciples who felt alone. He said, be not faithless. Faith is the opposite of fear. So we feel fear coming, and we say, Lord, I need faith. I want more faith. I read a while back, there's greater faith. There's a, there's a greater faith that we can have sometimes, that we have at times. Hmm. Why, did the, uh, why did the Easter egg hide? I saw somebody sleep out there. He was a little chicken. <laughs> All right, one more. What do you call a rabbit with fleas? No, not oh gosh. A bug's bunny. Okay, last one. Why was the little girl sad after the race? Because an egg beat her. All right, yeah, pull it back in. <laughs> Be not faithless. <laughs> now listen to this, my closing here. Are you, uh, are you enslaved by fear? Trust Christ and have peace. If it's something you've been battling with, make sure you're never too proud to come down and ask somebody for prayer. We'll have a time for that afterwards here. Trust in the Lord. If you want to give your heart to the Lord, you can come down as well. I always like to know about that where I can rejoice with you, giving your heart to the Lord. Christ said, fear not. Are you apprehensive about serving? You might be. Trust Christ and have peace. He's called us all to serve somewhere, right? He's called us all to do something. I want you to be encouraged. What a great Savior that we serve, right? He loves us and cares about us so much. He has such a special calling on your life for you to be able to do. You can do, like I said, things that I can't do, vice versa, that God has called us to do, to all work together. That's why there's so many branches that's why he gives us the example of the tree. Do you feel alone? Trust Christ and never feel alone. God does not want you to feel alone. Sometimes we feel alone, right? Sometimes we feel overwhelmed. Sometimes we feel like, I can't do it anymore. Anybody felt that way before? I can't do it, Lord. What should I do? Maybe get a nap would be good too, right? <laughs> run to him. Get a nap. Run to, run to the room. <laughs> Lock yourself in, maybe. 
Daddy. He's not here right now. You go in there and take a nap. Go rest. Get alone with the Lord. It's hard sometimes. We have to just prioritize. God wants you to know that his death, burial, and resurrection was for you because of his love for you, because of your special in the kingdom. No matter how unworthy you may feel, Scripture says otherwise. Okay? He says he would die for you. He would die for any individual here that not one of us would be lost. No matter what you think or what you've gone through, Christ has a plan for you. If you would, stand to your feet, and I'm going to pray. You know, if you have any of these special things that bother you, whether it's fear, whether it's serving, whether it's being alone, whether it's any of that, I want to ask you after the prayer that you can come down and uh, you can be prayed for. Uh, There's a lot I don't understand, but I do understand that the Lord loves us, and he wants us to walk in peace, and he wants us to, man, what a good crowd today. What a lovely, good-looking crowd, too. And I agree, uh, the ones that all work sure made this place look pretty. It looks really good. We've got a great facility here. Really blessed with that. Well, if we could, uh, afterwards, if we could, Barbara, if you would come up, anybody that, uh, that would need prayer, if uh, Barbara will be up here, and Mike, that good-looking white suit, it's the exact size I wear, by the way, I don't know what the Lord's telling you right now, <laughs> and whatever that number is in there, that's me. Well, let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for your death, burial, and resurrection. We thank you for us having the option to serve you, Lord. And to come to you. I pray right now, Lord, that our hearts would just be resurrected, that we would feel the peace beyond all understanding. If we don't have it, Lord, I pray that we would just fight for it. Fight to have it in our house, fight to have it with our family, that we would be able to take it to the workplace, marketplace, wherever we go, Lord. Lord, we love you so much. I know there's so many out there that are lost, that that need encouragement, that need love, that need to just be looked in the eye and tell them that they are important. Thank them for the small things. I pray right now, Lord God, that... uh, that you would just help us with this battle. Thank you so much, Jesus, for being such a great Savior. I pray everybody would have a, a, a great Easter today, Lord. Thank you this is the day of, that we get to celebrate that. Thank you we can celebrate that every day, Lord. We love you. We ask it in your precious name, Jesus. We thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to walk in freedom and strength with our family. Thank you that you want our families to be healed, Lord God, uh, in the name of Jesus. Amen.